Thank you for having us and thank you for being here. You look so sweet. I feel so sad that you gotta take all this back. You that kuleana, brother. Mahalo. Aloha to the kia iohana. I miss you, folks. So happy to see you. So we have three minutes, and every time I'm trying to think throughout my day, three minutes, what can I say that's going to shake the na'a? Why? Because we know more time. We're already late. We're already trying to save the future, right? So I was thinking, okay, so I was thinking about these rules, and we keep calling them rules, rules, rules. But what they are, they're act of war upon the very existence of Kanaka Maui, right? An act of war, right? Because we've gone beyond criminalization. We've been criminalized. It's happened, and it's happening. Okay, so we're at the act of war. So what are the admin rules now? They were talking about rules of engagement. I'm a frontliner. You like learn about Aloha? Where do he knew it? Come, come to the front lines. Let's talk about Aloha over there. Let's talk about Aloha when we put our families on hold. When we quitting jobs, when we're getting blacklisted, because we can't get hired again. Let's talk about that kind of aloha. Please tell me how to navigate those waters of aloha. Because that's the waters that I stand. I get aloha free, but I'm telling you. Come to the front line should we need to go up to the mana because that is where I'll be standing and I will not be standing alone. I was thinking today, you know, rarely I come to these things. Where is Ige stay? Where's Suzanne Case? Where is David Lassner? I was thinking, you know, they might be cowards. I was thinking, you know, I don't think that. Where are they? Cowards. So now I'm going to turn to our Kia'i, right? Because we all know we've been preparing, right? What are these rules? Bullshit. These rules, <laughs> they, they are that. But they're telling us our charges. Why? Because we're not going to go away. So when I see these rules, what am I hearing? I'm hearing that UH is proceeding. TMT is proceeding with their plans. So what does that mean we have to do? Ho'omakaukau. Get ready, folks. Get ready to ascend the Mauna because we will need to be there. And if you can't be up there, we will need your support. So this is a kahea. This is a kahea to all of our people throughout Hawaii, to our relatives abroad. We will need you. If you stand for peace, if you believe in indigenous rights, in peace for the earth, we will need you to stand with us and to spread the message of aloha. And so I turn to you because I ask you, please don't forget my face. Because right now, and for the past couple of months, ever since this all had unfolded, the state has been allowing looking for more funds to increase their enforcement, allowing enforcement to expand their capacities. You know what we're going up to the mountain with? Prayers, chants, and songs. We're not armed. Who's armed? The folks coming up to meet us, to greet us with what, their weapons? Guess what? You guys lost your guys' minds. Yep. We up there with our kiki and our kupuna. You're bringing weapons. For what? No need. So I go in, because you got to think of the aloha aina that came before. And I'm thinking of Uncle Soli Niheu. And what I hear is Uncle Soli. Everybody know Uncle Soli? What he said? How in are you? How in are you? Everybody ask yourself, how in are you? All, all. all in. Everybody, all, all in. in. I see you on the mountain now. Everybody keep safe. Enjoy time playing down the mountain, because when the time comes, I see you up top. Huh.
We ask for your guidance, for your intervention, and for your aloha to be able to feel us and help us know what we're supposed to do with us through our gahal, through our spirits, through our hearts and minds. You know, we love you and we're so grateful for you and we do these things for you and for our kiki and with them and with our ohana. Um, I'm Mama Wano. work so hard to sacrifice so much to building Hale and trying to have it be present within our spaces because for me that's the ultimate meaning of safety is a Hale to then have that taken away we're trying to like rebuild we're trying to like put them in spaces that it's needed so that we can help heal our communities and of course you know they don't like us to heal they don't want us to recover they don't want us to thrive um, because then that means that's not conducive to their way of wanting our spaces to be used and our, our culture to be um, perpetuated. Those la'au was, the intentionality, you know, was, was, was said to be for that hale. Um, my sister, Nalani, she carved every single post, every ule into every post, every kohe into every rafter. And, you know, like the intention is our kupunas. When we offloaded it off the truck, Everybody treated it like it is our kupuna because it is and that that procreation what happens when those you know meet and bear that weight of the hale is metaphoric to bearing that huge weight of existing as a kanaka because we are hale we are hale that comes from our mothers that came from our grandmothers and they our mothers create us within themselves and our hale builders that then create a hale for to be left in and so if that hale is like us to just take a hale that is still living and thriving and has purpose and throw it away and dismantle it is metaphoric to the way that they also treat us you know and that's how i feel i feel like i've just been like and thrown thrown away as a practitioner of of hale building we go into the spaces when the community asks for us to come and we build with all of our love, with our intentions, knowing culturally through the way that we've learned in our halal, um, with Ike Kupuna to being able to construct spaces safely in all aspects, physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and culturally, you know, with protocols, with ceremony, um, and again, with Ike Kupuna. So, and then we leave, you know, and it's it's the kuleana of the of the community that we've built in to being able to really continue to malama it. Building Hale is you you are you are the voice of you are perpetuating the voice of the community and what they're wanting, what they're needing. Because as you build with them, you know, it takes the whole community to build that Hale. When we were doing that Hale, it's a miracle it happened in three days. That 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 is unheard of. It's a miracle that we didn't b dig and we're. And that it's withstood 100 mile winds. It's a miracle that it was built at that speed, as cold it is, as it was, having our hands like freezing off with the limited amount of people that we had, with the limited amount of resources that we had at that altitude. You know, like feeling our kupunas hands on my hands, feeling the warmth of their love around my heart, you know, like all of those things, those stuff that you cannot erase from memory and it should not be erased in it. Because even though they take away our spaces and, and tell us that we do not exist, it comes in our memory. We are oral people, we are orators, we tell, tell our stories, they, they continue. That's why we can go all the way back to the beginning within our Kubulipo. That's why we have our, our, our you know, Mo'olelo, that's why we have our Ka'au, that's why we know our, our gods and our goddesses, that's why we have a relationship with our Aina, with our plants, with our animals, with the ocean. Because we are people who remember 
through speaking it and through telling it to each other. And so even though physically it's not there, another picture can never be taken of that space as it was. It will always be remembered because we have to continue to talk about it. We're just feeling like the illegal occupation is continuing to try and erase us, to make us feel like we're extinct, to make us feel like we are relics of the past that our only worth is has been has been gotten already that you know we're only good for museums we're only good for um you know being a part of you know how they choose to identify us and i mean that's the feeling and my knowledge though like what i what i know is that we are our kupunas that we have our picos are intact that we have intergenerational knowledge and ike kupuna that still flows through us and that comes out in our work that we have our genealogical ties to our spaces that we are kanaka and that we legally have no um, have no what does it call i don't even know the word like we're we are not we do not have to be loyal to to the laws of what America is placing on us because we are not American. We are legally occupied. So anyways, that's just like, there's just so much thoughts like going through my head. Like, I don't even know, like, I just feel sad. Like, I feel like heartbroken. I know that we are resilient and that we could build more. Um, but I just feel like our, our sacred space has been disrespected again like they're already disrespecting our pico walkia in what they're doing and now they're taking away our spaces that we created to be a place where we can pray a place that we can gather together a place that stands for us to being able to help us through this cultural trauma that they are continuing to put on us like it's already been happening intergenerationally and they're still trying to get into our our heads and our hearts with the trauma that they're placing on us so i don't know i just feel i feel super sad and of course i feel resilient but the sadness is what i'm feeling at this moment and so that hale hale kukia imauna for me held a very special place in my heart because it was one that um you know was done with my sister you know, for our brother, for the Kia'i up there, with the Ko'o of our Ohana, of the Kiliho Umalus, and my mom, and you know, so many other Kia'i uh, at a time when we didn't know what else to do but to gather together and to stand. And so that whole experience to now be physically taken off of this place is really like a lot of kama in my, in my heart, just feeling like the illegal occupation is continuing to try and erase us to make us feel like we're extinct to make us feel like we are relics of the past that our only worth is has been has been gotten already that you know we're only good for museums it just you know just watching everybody and what they're going through seeing kahokahi getting arrested being able to talk to a lot of our kiai this morning um, and seeing what they're going through, everyone's just so like, it's it's devastating. It's really devastating. Trying to be forced off of spaces, trying to be erased. I don't feel like, um, I mean, my, my, I'm not, I'm not, I don't wish any harm on anybody. I'm not. I'm not saying that that people that that had to do it aren't struggling within with their own stuff, or that they're even aware that the lawmakers, quote unquote, lawmakers of Hawaii of of the fake state, isn't or or you know whatever isn't trying to be conscious. But um, you know, they have proof of what it has done and are choosing to look away from it, and that's their choice. And and those things are things of the heart and the soul that they would have to, you know, come into terms with. So, you know, definitely sending aloha to to those people. And I really hope, like, honestly, over and over again, like, why wait till it's too late? Like, 
do something now. Like little things you can do now to being able to make the world a bit different for our future, for our keiki, you know, for our, I know, for our world. And, you know, for me, it's making honey. That's my little thing I can do. And, you know, who knows the effect of it after me. But I hope that it's something that is something that continues. art form and like to be led by my sister you know to wahine you know that is so cool the highest hale in hawaii done temporarily to make a space to provide for a kiai that's what wahine do you know what i mean like and we're we're two wahine that are in a male dominant cultural practice you know for me like it's a big deal and then even as a mahu you know in, in these spaces being a cultural practitioner i'm the only mahu that builds hale and we have spaces you know within our culture there was never an exclusivity in regards to gender or mahu-ness you know like what we can or cannot do like for me right now what i've ever experienced anyways we keep building we're gonna keep rebuilding if they want if the community of Mauna Kea and the Kia'i up there want another one, then we'll figure that out. And then we have Uncle Billy, we have Uncle Walter, we've got holiday builders on, on um, you know, Uncle Mugabe. Probably that's what we'll have it done tomorrow. Uh, and if they want us to come, then I'll definitely come. Always, you know, because that's Pili now, and that's our Pili I know. So we have to. Everything, our Kuliana's relationships and to our lahui and it's to our akua and our makua and our kupuna and to our future. I don't know, this is um, Pohaku, Sananakori, and I'm going to be doing something for the living life. <laughs> Alright, I got it. I've been here since I've been here. Really, when when we come up, because we're uh, Makalai Va'a, this is, this is our Kuliana, our Va'a. We like the Mahalo guys so much. Because um, um, our first Hale Hamaku is a um, Hale Pule, I think. Pray to, to connect to Akua um, and it's facing our Mauna. And um, um, we, we feel like it, it's almost as if. Um, this is opening up for us, and not just for us, but for everybody. Like so happy, like watching it on Facebook, seeing that already they put up an ahu where that hale was, like right on. Like that makes me so happy to. Kiai Mauna. Aloha. Um, I'm over here at Pu'uhulu Hulu, uh, near the saddle, in the shadow of Mauna Kea. First thing I want to say is, our one ahu here is still intact. We spent the night on the mountain uh, doing ceremonies. We started at the ocean coming all the way up. Uh, I want to just comment about yesterday. It was very kamaha for us to witness the destruction and desecration of our ahu. These are places of prayer. They are places where um, our ashes are placed. They are places for ritual and ceremony. And what was done was nothing less than caused suffering in those who had to witness it and know of it. It was vital. But more importantly, none of those ahus were in the way. So when they said that they had to remove them, this is not true. The whole plateau is what they're looking to build upon. So even if it was in the way, they had options to go around. It was unnecessary 
and it is, I don't have any words to describe it. But what I also want to say is that we did go up and see what they had done. So now we become the witness. You know how Uncle Skippy's song says, we're the witness, not the crime. So the governor's speech, uh, well, no. You know, the things that he said are incorrect. And I just want the people to know that when the governor said we've exhausted our legal remedy, this is not true. And we will use all means, nonviolent, peaceful, and aloha. And they need to know that we will continue to protect our mom. So no lose hope, everybody. Stay tuned. Stay in your prayer. And stay with Akua. Mahalo, ayo. Everything has been said that I wanted to say. And so I just want to share this. I was arrested on Mauna Awakia in 2015 under similar rules that didn't protect me, that didn't protect my ceremony, didn't protect the people that I was with. And they're right here. So many of the women who were arrested that night are right here and I want you to stand up because I want you to see In a pule, calling on Pule Aku, an Owahi Mai Pule, which is an ancient pule, calling on the actual energy, the divinity of Pule Aku. And in that moment, we were ripped apart in our ceremony just because it was after hours, just because we weren't supposed to be there in a certain time, because it was regulated by these rules that continue to criminalize us. It's insulting that you come here because you're hearing it, you're listening it, but I don't know if you're comprehending what we're saying to you. When we say a place is sacred, it's very simple. A place is sacred because it gives life. We are protecting the aina up there that gives life, it holds water. So if you drink water, this issue should matter to you. For the hundreds of keiki that are going to come after us. That's why we're up there. When I looked at my sister tonight, and the way that she came up here, pa'apono, is because she was raised by that mauna. She was clear and she was pa because she was raised on that mauna. We are here stronger today because we are all raised up on that mauna. And so I'm just saying, I don't want what happened to us to happen again. It was traumatizing to be arrested in prayer. It was traumatizing to the heart and the awe of the spirit. And we're going up there in a good way because we're descendants of Mauna Awakia. In that chant that I just shared, it tells us how we are directly related and connected to the Mauna. That's why we go, because we are raised to protect our kupuna. That's why we're doing this. That's why we are here. We are still here, we are still standing. See you on the mauna or not. But kukia i mauna a aku. That mauna will prevail because pono will prevail. 
And I believe that with my whole heart. Kapu aloha. Aloha aina. Kukia imauna. Kukia imauna.
because outside of our roles and our labels of who we are in our school system, you guys are doing something really shameful as humans. Ano ay kaya loha yaka ko pa ulo ay kaya kaka yaka nei aloha ke olu olu o koka ko pule o yahoi o pule na aumakua na pula pula o kuki ay mauna e ha manawa na aumakua mai kalahi kia kalakau mai kaho o kuki yaka halawai. Na uma kua ya kahina kua ya kahina lo ya kakau ikalani o kiha ikalani o e ikalani nu nu lu ikalani ka holo ikalani e ya na pula pula a o ko o ku kia imaunda e malama o ko ya ma ko e ulu ikalani e ulu ikahonua e ulu ikapai aina o Hawaii. E ho mai ka ike, e ho mai ka ikaika, e ho mai ka ka mai, e ho mai ma popopono, e ho mai ka ike papa lua, e ho mai ka mana. Na au ma guai, la iki a ka la kau, mai ka ho oku i a ka ala wai. Na au ma guai a ka ina guai a ka ina alo, i a ka a kau i ka lani, o ki ha i ka lani, o e i ka lani. Nu nulu i kalani, ka holo i kalani. E ia nga pula pula a o kou o ku ki a i mauna. E malama o kou i a ma kou. E ulu i kalani, e ulu i ka honua, e ulu i ka pai aina o Hawaii. E ho mai ka ike, e ho mai ka ikaika, e ho mai ki a ka mai, e ho mai ka mao popopono, e ho mai ka ike papa alua, e ho mai ka mana. Na au makua mai ka la hiki a ka la kau, mai ka ho oku i a ka hala wai. Na au makua i a ka ina kua i a ka ina alo i a ka a kau i ka lani. O ki ha i ka lani, o e i ka lani, nu nulu i ka lani, ka holo i ka lani. E i a nga pula pula a o kou o ku ki a i mauna. E malama o kou i a ma kou. E ulu i ka lani, e ulu i ka honua. E ulu i ka pai ai no o Hawaii. E ho mai ka ike, e ho mai ka ikaika, e ho mai ka aka mai, e ho mai ka maa popopono, e ho mai ka ike papa alua, e ho mai ka mana. Na au maa kua mai ka la hiki a ka la kau, mai ka ho o kui a ka hala wai. Na au maa kua i a ka ina kua i a ka ina alo, i a ka a kau i ka lani. O ki ha i ka lani. O e i ka lani, nu nulu i ka lani, ka holo i ka lani. E i a nga pula pula a o kou o ku kia i mauna. E malama o kou i a ma kou. E ulu i ka lani, e ulu i ka honua, e ulu i ka pai aina o Hawaii. E ho mai ka ike, e ho mai ka ikaika, e ho mai ka aka mai, e ho mai ka maa pupua, e ho mai ka ike papa alua, E ho mai ka mana. A mama ua noa. A vai i pono i na na i ko mo i ka la ni a li i ke a li i ma ku a la
Malo. So um, today's press conference was organized by three organizations, Kahea, the Hawaiian Environmental Alliance, Huli, Hawaii Unity and Liberation Institute, and the whole, uh, Mauna Kea Awareness and Education. So we're really grateful to the three groups for um, coming together and sharing resources. Because that's what it's always about, right? For us, it's always about aloha. It's always about working together. Yeah? It's always about having these conversations. As you know, last Thursday, the Department of Land and Natural Resources took down two hale and two ahu from Mauna Kea. In their press conference, Governor Ige and Attorney General Claire Connors, they claimed that the ahu and the hale did not bear traditional customary significance. So we're here today to respond to that claim and we're also here to voice our concerns over what looks like the state's gearing up for the excessive use of violence when the protectors of Mauna Kea have only shown aloha in this struggle. So I wanna ask the question here, why is the state risking our lives and our safety for a private corporation? The state is looking at a confrontation where University of Hawaii students and community college students, kupuna, and people from our own communities, many of whom are not Hawaiian, they're looking at arresting us for a private corporation. And we need to be asking the question, why, why? So our speakers today, um, and also I wanna say that there is an alternative. The Canary Islands government has said that they're happy to have the TMT. There is a peaceful resolution to this conflict. There does not need to be a confrontation on Mauna Kea. Yeah. So I'm going to turn it over to Kealoha Pishiora. Oh, where do you want me to go? Go to the middle. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, Aloha, everybody. Uh, I'm going to take a moment because we're going to talk about Mauna Kea uh, to call in the Akua. Uh, we called to our ancestors earlier. We ask you, Kea Kua, no Kua, no Makua, abide with us this day here. Uh, speak for us and be with us and help us to open our heart, our mind, our body, and our spirit to the ways of the heavens. We thank you. Um, I'm first going to speak to the state and to the, the problems of their lawlessness. And be very clear, the state is using selective enforcement and they, be ha they have begun their heavy-handed tactics, aggression, and violence against the people of Hawaii and quite frankly, the world who loves Hawaii. They have begun their lawlessness by failing to enforce the desecration law. The fact that it's state sanctioned desecration makes no difference. It is desecration. And we call upon Governor Ige, uh, the Attorney General Connors, Suzanne Case, and the President of the University to stop it. This is violence. What they did is violence and aggression against the peaceful, nonviolent, Kanaka Maoli and their supporters and to the world. They put the pe good people of Hawaii's name 
in danger. When they have options and the TMT is not necessary, the greater and bigger telescopes are being built as we speak. So make no mistake, it's lawlessness. Also, they call them unpermitted structures, the ahu, all of them. They're not unpermitted because if you look at the land use law, which is 13.5-2 definitions, Native Hawaiian use and practice is exempt from permitting. Ask yourself, how would you get a permit anyways? There's no even ability. To, and of course, there's no way to get the permit because we're exempt. Because constitutionally, the state is affirmatively meant to protect our rights and our practices. So make no mistake, this is violence and aggression. Now, how do we respond is the question. How have we responded in the past? Peacefully, nonviolently, in kapu aloha. Now the, the governor alluded in his statement, he hopes that we will not be violent this time. Now that is double speak because we've never been violent in over a hundred years given opportunities to be violent we have always chosen to adhere to the will of the heavens that calls upon our peace within and our ali'i kamehameha when he passed declared that there shall be no more war in hawaii he put kukailimoku to rest face down our queen called upon our people to not be violent, even when we could have been. And even when some were rising. So make no mistake, we haven't been violent and we have no intention of being violent, but we have intention of continuing to stand to protect our Mauna. Now, Sorry, I had a couple notes because I wanted to make sure. I know there will be an opportunity to ask questions and I hope that you do. But what I want people to remember is you call upon the Akua to give you peace. Mauna Kea is the grand unifier and it is the temple of peace and aloha. Aloha is the greatest power in the universe. And we are not powerless, we are powerful and that is why the state is trying to trigger us all to be violent, to give them justification to be violent. But we don't need to do that because we haven't done it and it is not our way. It has never been our way since Western occupation of our country. And we have survived and we represent the 4% who didn't die. Our kupuna didn't die and they survived. And so that is why we're still standing here and we're gonna continue to stand because in the end, aloha, always wins. It will win this time, and it will win forever. Aloha, mahalo. Aloha nui kako. Aloha lahui. Mahalo everyone for being here. I'm here to just share with you the pain and the violence that I felt on the 20th of June. As we were positioned in prayer, 
Imagine sitting in your house of Pule. And vehicles surrounding us. 30 to 20 to 30 vehicles, officers. And when I look up, I see people, I see officers with guns after pulling. Lena Alla Slayholm, PKL, we're all in pulley. As we we asking Kiakua to help us to soften the hearts of the state. As we are in prayer, asking the state to soften their hearts and to call off this act of violence, act of genocide. I asked who gave the order for this action. The officers there did their job according to what they were there for. Their operation was conducted in a highly organized, professional way. There was no one that I could see that was in charge. But that's not the point. The point is, Halikukiai Mauna was built. It was built with many prayers, many hands, thousands of children, schools, people from all different nations came to support. It wasn't a political Hali. It was a Hali of preparation, a Hali where we prepare ourselves to protect the Vawakua. I couldn't express more what the, what the effects were to, till today. The effects on our practice, my practice as an individual, to live and pray for the things that our kupuna taught us, aloha ina, is to love the land, to live with the land, not to destroy it. I just would like to send a message out in aloha to the state to recognize the people of Hawaii, the Kanaka Mole of this, of this lands. I am a descendant, and many are. And we need to recognize this. We are protected by statute. It's already been said. How do I live? How does my grandkids live? How do these children live in the lands that we are birth, born to with that vested right, birthright? <coughs> Those were acts of violence when you take down a special and not special but sacred places, sacred sacred places, sacred spaces. We have all types of sacred places, sacred spaces in Hawaii by foreigners. Our kupuna taught us how to live in Aloha Aina. And today, our children are learning that. 
in my time, we didn't learn that. We learned how to follow the rules. The rules of what? That's what I'm questioning. I believe that, personally, they need to stop. Stop right now. For the future of Hawaii and the Kiki. That's all I stand for. But Manawa Kea is the pinnacle, the pico. Don't let them, the media, you have a power. You have a power to redirect people's minds. Right now, I'm not trying to redirect anybody's mind. I'm trying to tell you the truth that if we don't listen to what Mauna, Mauna Oakea holds and what Hawaii holds, then what's gonna happen? How are we gonna teach, how are you gonna teach your children about Hawaii? Let's protect Hawaii. Let's exercise the Aloha Bill that was signed by uh, Mr. Ige. Exercise it. Everybody makes mistakes. And I believe that we can learn by mistakes. I always believe that conflict is an opportunity for positive change. And it's only the attitude of people that's going to help, help with that. I don't speak all the time, so I just want you to know that um, I'm not really good at this, but I, I love Hawaii and I love the keiki, and it's very important to me. Yeah. I'm a makua, I'm a, a grandfather, kupuna, and I'm very blessed. And I want my, my family to be protected and be able to practice and walk the lands and do the things that we were taught to do, that we need to do. Malamara ocean, Malamara land, Malama each one spirit. Love one another. Kikai, kikai. That's the only way we can move forward with this. Any movement from the governor in the same direction will continue to show violence on his part, but I know not in our people. Aloha. Aloha kako, ovao o Viviana po Maika'i McGregor. I'm a professor in the Department of Ethnic Studies at UH Manoa, and I am the director of the Center for Oral History. And I've been asked to talk about what has been the role of the university in relation to other Native Hawaiian movements over time, and also the role of Mauna Kea in our, our struggle now. Oh, okay, mahalo. <laughs> okay, so um, my department, Department of Ethics Studies, was started out of a student movement. Uh, it was started um, out of a sit-in at Bachman Hall uh, in, in protest of uh, denial of tenure. Um, uh, 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 Oliver Lee, who was uh, uh, the uh, mentor for this, for a democratic society. Um, and our Department of Ethnic Studies was founded there, and at one point the university found itself in uh, an adversary position with the community, as it is now, where it tried to eliminate our, our department. And we gathered the support of faculty, and community, and alumni, and legislators, and the union movement to show the university that we needed to have our history taught our way, and that is our slogan that we continue to today. We needed to have um, our students learn about connection to the Aina, to have Aina-based education, to have education that's rooted in our communities, that serves our communities, that gives back to our communities. And the university ultimately had to acknowledge that role and to um, make the space for our department to, to grow and to flourish and for other departments, such as um, now the School of Hawaii Nua Kea, to also begin to carry on that legacy of teaching and research and uh, engagement with our community about our Native Hawaiian people and the multi-ethnic peoples who have contributed to the development and growth and progress here in Hawaii. Um, 
The university again found itself in an adversarial position over the issue of geothermal development in, the, in Puna, Hawaii. And I was one of the uh, advisors or consultants with the Pili Defense Fund who organized to again uh, protect a sacred realm, a sacred goddess, Arakua Pele, from the, the desecration of geothermal development. The steam that is being drawn from that, from the volcano, is her life force. And the university had started uh, the uh, geothermal project with an experimental well at Kapoho, and it was only generating two, two um, megawatts, but it was a, a disaster, really. It was, it was just uh, plummeting all this uh, gases that were unfiltered into the environment because it was a desecration of Pele. And again, the community, uh, the community in Pele, the, the, the larger community in Hawaii, the faculty and, and students had to organize again to uh, stop that desecration. And we saw last year when Pele erupted that what she will ultimately take down those that forces and, uh, and it's Probably, we need to acknowledge the wisdom of the Pele practitioners in challenging geothermal as a viable source of energy because it is not only a violation of our sacred resource, our sacred akua, but it is a dangerous form of energy development for our people. And if we had been relying on 500 megawatts out of Waukeleopuna at that time, we would have um, had a total shutdown of electricity. And so I think their, their wisdom of that indigenous knowledge about the nature of our resources, our elemental life forces such as Pele, uh, again shown to be important to follow and to acknowledge. Um, and uh, uh, 40, 40, uh, three years ago, we started on Ko'olawe, the movement of Aloha Aina to stop the abuse of our lands, to stop the abuse of our people. And the Ko'olawe movement has become, uh, became uh, a movement that inspired and touched the hearts and minds of people across the islands. And we showed that with Aloha Aina as our goal, respect and stewardship of the land, that we can stop the abuse, in that case of the military and that whole military industrial complex. We're now three generations uh, trained in Aloha Aina. Uh, we sat here, I see Skippy Owani, his daughter, his grandchild. Uh, we have our, our, me and my daughter, my, my grandchildren. We all stand firm to stop the desecration of Mauna Awakea. Our ancestors understood that the, the, the summit of Mauna Kea and the summit of all mountains are very uh, fragile and very important realms that support the life, support the life of our whole island. Mauna Kea is instrumental in catching that rainfall that comes across the ocean and creating that, that source for the waters, the clouds to gather and to give its rain to, to reinforce the earth, for the meaning of Wakea to Papa to reinforce the life force of Papa. And our ancestors knew that those realms were so important that you needed to do high ceremony and only go there with deep purpose and, and with much reverence. And those areas were sacred uh, for all. And that ancient wisdom is important because just as in the Pele case, we don't know what that force represents. If we look at our, our legends and our oli and the, the kanawai, the laws the, of nature that our, our scientific ancestors acknowledged and, and realized, they understood that the patterns of the universal life forces um, have certain natural laws. In the case of Pele, it was never developed on the, the hot back of Pele. In the case of Mauna Awakea, we are not supposed to uh, enter there unless in high ceremony and with deepest reverence and respect and we're not supposed to at all develop or alter that ecosystem because altering that ecosystem can have devastating consequences for us. And so again we're in a position where the University of Hawaii has to decide if it will stand 
and take on its kuyana of aloha aina and stewardship for the land and, and a commitment and accountability to the people of Hawaii, or if it will again stand, as we said earlier, in support of a corporation to pursue profits for a 20-year period of development of a telescope that will be obsolete uh, within 25 years. The University of Hawaii Manoa, in the last uh, spring semester, embraced the goal of becoming an Aloha Aina University. And at the time when we had those discussions among the faculty and students about why is the University of Hawaii Manoa adopting a goal of becoming an Aloha Aina University, we said the first test will be Mauna Kea. Yeah. And here we are. This is the test. The university needs to acknowledge, as it has been forced to in the past, and we will make sure that it will have to do that. The university has to acknowledge its kuleana as a steward for Mauna Awakea to really embrace and practice Aloha Aina and, and protect the sacred realm of Mauna Awakea and not allow its development and its desecration. So I just want to say that um, deeply rooted in our uh, Aloha Aina movement, not just of the past three generations, but generations to our queen and, and the Aloha Aina movement of the, of, that protected her and united around her. We stand firm, we will kupa'a, we will persist. We will not give up. This telescope will not be built and the university will have to reassess its values and um, embrace Aloha Aina as its kuleana. Mahalo and Aloha. Yeah. Aloha mai kako, aloha lahui. It's so wonderful to see so many beautiful Kanaka faces here today. I'm really honored to be here. Uh, my name is Noilani Aihia. Uh, I want to acknowledge and honor my kupuna who have been standing firm for 126 years, my kupuna who signed the Ku'e petition, and my kupuna who fought in the Wilcox Rebellion. I stand here in their footsteps and because of them. Um, I am honored to speak today on behalf of the Mauna Medic Healers Hui and as a kia'i of Haleakala. I call it my for my pala pala, but this is important and I don't want to misspeak. In August of 2017, we had our last action atop Haleakala to try to stop the final transport of um, a part of the solar telescope, the Daniel K. Inoue Solar Telescope. Like all of our protections, we came armed with our pule, with our oli, with our le, and with our bodies, ready to protect our mauna. That night, in the very early hours of the morning, we experienced firsthand what police violence looks like. My fellow kia'i kia brother was violently slammed to the ground. He was held down forcefully while he was saying, I can't breathe and then shortly thereafter became unconscious. He was left handcuffed, lying on the ground, and despite the fact that law enforcement officers are all first responders and trained to render medical aid, they did nothing. Their callousness towards his safety and health was incredibly unsettling and traumatizing to all the kia'i and supporters who were there that night. He was finally transported to the hospital and as soon as he regained consciousness was taken into police custody. All of this for fulfilling a kuleana. A kuleana. To attempt to protect our sacred mauna from continued desecration. This kiai has a permanent brain injury. Unlike the previous Haleakala actions, the police did not show up that night in their riot gear as they had done the year before. But they carried with them guns packed with rubber bullets. And they broadcast their threats in Olelo Hawaii, further patronizing us by using our own language to make threats against us. On this night, they had their sound cannons ready to assault us with despite the fact that a federal court has ruled that piercing sound can be considered excessive force. Long range acoustic device or LRADs were deemed potentially deadly tools. After this incredibly painful turn of events, 
the Mount Emetic Healers Hui was formed. We could see that law enforcement had no intention of protecting the peace and looking out for everyone's well-being. They were only there to protect the settler state's corporate project. They were acting as shills of the fake state and the U.S. military that illegally occupies and desecrates Haleakala. It has recently come to my attention as well that law enforcement agencies in Hawaii are employing and ignoring officers with job-induced PTSD in a climate that shames officers requiring mental health assistance. This is a further danger to us as Kia'i that complicates the messy dynamics when they send traumatized Hawaiians to police other Hawaiians. This is coming on the heels of 126 years of oppression, dispossession, forced assimilation, cultural genocide, historic trauma, and intergenerational trauma for both the Kanaka Maoli officers as well as the Kia'ian supporters. None of us can heal from these traumas until we tell the truth about them. And so the Mount Emetic Healers who we were formed to address the many levels of trauma our people face in relationship to protecting our Mauna, whether it's state-sanctioned violence, simple accidents, or PTSD. We have a commitment to be on the Mauna and protect the protectors. We are further committed in light of the new sign that was just erected where Hale Kuhio once proudly stood, a sign which uses, again, only Olelo Hawaii, that translates to something like, be careful, traveling up the Mauna can be deadly, continue at your own risk, there are no rescue, rescue personnel on the Mauna. This is another racist fear tactic. The Mount Medic Healers who we will try to render first aid with our humble means, as the state has disavowed caring for the life and well-being of those who ascend the slopes of Mauna Awakea. Through their past actions, the state has indicated a blatant lack of concern for the health and well-being of those who protect our sacred places. Of particular concern are the possibility of significant injury to nonviolent, peaceful protectors if chemical weapons such as tear gas or pepper spray or sound cannon, LRADs, are used. To learn more about the Medic Healer Hui, you can go to our Facebook page, Mauna Medic Healer Hui, and see you on the Mauna. Hey, yeah. hello. Aloha. And good morning. Uh, my name is Lance Collins. I'm an attorney with uh, Kahea, the uh, Hawaiian and Environmental Alliance. Uh, I was retained by Kahea to uh, try to work with the Board of Land and Natural Resources regarding concerns uh, over the use of military weapons by the Division of Conservation and uh, Resource Enforcement. Uh, DOCARE is its, is its acronym. DOCARE officers have limited police powers under statute. Their job is to enforce conservation and resource laws. They're not police uh, in the traditional sense of the word. Uh, they don't have jails. Uh, if they do apprehend somebody, they're supposed to turn them over to the police or take them to court. Uh, so, uh, during the non-violent demonstrations uh, at Haleakala in 2017, as uh, Ms. Ahia had mentioned just now, uh, there was a long-range acoustical device, a sound cannon, um, that was present, and there was concern about uh, the use of that on civilians. Uh, the long-range acoustical device, the LRAD, is a military weapon that was designed by military contractors after the bombing of the USS Cole. And its use by the military is to repel combatants from uh, attacking or entering naval ships. Uh, it is not a public announcement system. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, certain law enforcement agencies uh, in the United States and other countries have begun to use uh, this device against civilians. Um, 
The Second Circuit uh, Court of Appeals uh, has ruled that under federal law, uh, its use uh, violates clearly established protected rights under the U.S. Constitution's 14th Amendment. Um, under Hawaii law, uh, on several provisions of the Hawaii Constitution, uh, the protections afforded folks uh, is greater than federal law. And so the use of LRAD against uh, civilians uh, would be a violation of the Hawaii State Constitution. And most importantly, uh, I think uh, for everybody, under Article I of the United Nations Convention Against Torture and Other Cruel, Inhumane, and Degrading Treatment or Punishment, the use of LRADs, which is a military weapon against civilians, constitutes torture under international law. Last week, we asked Chair Case to publicly and immediately renounce the use of military weapons against civilians uh, within her jurisdiction. There was no response. Instead, a statement that has been attributed to somebody at DoCare indicated that the LRAD was not supposedly part of their use of force continuum, but that was not responsive to our request that the state publicly and immediately renounce the use of military weapons against civilians, particularly on Mauna Kea. Today, I sent a letter to Governor Ige reaffirming that request that he publicly renounce the use of military weapons against civilians, not just by Doe Care officers who have limited police powers, but by all law enforcement officials under his authority and to direct chair case to also publicly renounce the use of military weapons against civilians. Uh, it's not appropriate, and even for Doe Care itself, this is the problem that's posed by Doe Care. Doe Care's purpose is to protect resources and historic properties, and it does that primarily by working with the community to prevent and protect the destruction and desecration of natural and historic properties. By militarizing Doe Care, which is a limited police power agency, what it does is it undermines the trust and legitimacy that Doe Care officers need to be able to effectively uh, enforce resource uh, laws. And so the, this uh, converting Doe Care into a paramilitary uh, occupied territory uh, force uh, turns them against the exact community that they have to work with to do what is their real job. We also reject uh, Doe Care's claim that these uh, LRAD equipment uh, are for natural disaster purposes. There's nothing in Doe Care's statute that gives them any power or authority over any natural disasters. And there's no explanation for this long-standing underfunding of the DLNR, why they would spend $15,000 on a so-called public announcement system that on the market only costs 1000 if public announcement system is the purpose of having this LRAD. We call on the board to publicly renounce the use of these devices and other military weapons against civilians and to get rid of it as soon as possible. Thank you. Last week's press conference hit the pinnacle of absurdity when just hours after seeing cherished Hale and Ahu destroyed, Governor Ige declared that the state would proceed in a way that respects the people, place, and culture that make Hawaii unique. It's not respectful to throw cultural and religious items into a truck labeled junk removal, nor is it respectful to see workers flinging the stones that once formed the foundation of a beloved community gathering space through their legs. UH President Lasner offered an apology for the pain that he knows TMT will cause, but he forges ahead anyway. He claimed that TMT will be the last new site developed on Mauna Kea and pledged to decommission five other telescopes, which is already a requirement of the current general lease that expires in 2033 and is therefore an unimpressive claim of mitigation for the construction of an 18-story building in the Bawakua. Governor Ige closed with a patronizing warning to those who want to exercise their constitutional right of free speech to conduct ourselves without endangering the lives of others. An ironic statement considering that in the past, Kia Imauna and Haleakala, also defending against a telescope, 
shielded with lay, prayer, and song, were confronted by law enforcement armed with guns, riot gear, and a sound cannon, which Kahel discovered last week Dokar has also um, procured. Following last week's insistence by the state that TMT has met all its pre-construction conditions, Kahea sent out an action alert to our supporters about a hearing for a water permit that we believe TMT had yet to obtain. Over 1,400 people submitted testimony in just a few days, showing how much Mauna Kea means to our community. Unfortunately, we learned that the Department of Health has elected to grant an administrative extension to TMT's 2014 stormwater runoff permit, buying them another five years without any further public review. This is the technicality on which TMT claims to have obtained this necessary permit. So today we challenge UH, TMT, and the state to not merely aim for what is technically legal, but for what is right, what is fair, and what is moral. I want to close with a quick message to Kia'i across the Pai Aina and beyond. It's time for hard conversations with family and friends. We need you to educate the people who know and trust you. Now is the time to prepare. Find like-minded, like-valued folks and form relationships and make plans to take care of each other in this struggle. Because we have a long road ahead and it's important to malama ourselves and each other. Many people have asked about fundraisers or ways to help, and we will be putting out a list of vetted organizations to give to. Please look for that and give to whoever you know and trust best. Mahalo nui to everyone for coming today, especially the kia'i behind us and those who couldn't come today, and to the diverse group of speakers representing a broad base of support and love for Mauna Kea. Hey, hey, hey.